Welcome. In this presentation, we're going to take a first look at the big idea of algorithms. Let's begin with an analogy to something you're probably familiar with. An algorithm is like a recipe. For example, here's my recipe for tossed salad. First step is to mix together vegetables of your choice, then add two parts olive oil to one part vinegar, add salt and pepper to taste, toss well, and serve immediately. Now, I make tossed salad almost every day, so I know exactly what to do based on that recipe. But someone who's new to making tossed salad might find it difficult to follow some of these steps. For example, what vegetables go best? And how much olive oil exactly? Should it be a teaspoon, a tablespoon? And what does it mean adding pepper and salt to taste? And how well is well tossed? So a, a, someone who isn't familiar with salads might find it difficult to, to follow that recipe. Well, we know from our apps that we have to be very precise when we make computer apps. Therefore, the difference between a, an algorithm and a recipe is that algorithms have to be much more precise. Here's a good definition of an algorithm. It's a step-by-step -step procedure, like a recipe, that does some calculation or computation. However, each step in the algorithm must be precise and unambiguous, and also each step must be doable. It can't be something, some operation that's impossible to do. So let's take a simple example, an algorithm for averaging three numbers. Step one is to write the first number on a piece of paper. Step two is to add the second number to the first number. Step three is add the third number to the sum of the first two numbers, giving a new sum. So our new sum is 18. Step four is divide the sum of the numbers by three, giving us six. And step five is stop, that the resulting value is the average of the three numbers. So as you can see, each step is very precise. Each step is very doable by means of a simple arithmetic operation. But here's an algorithm that isn't precise enough. Let's see what's wrong. To wash your hair, wash with shampoo, then rinse, then repeat. If you follow this algorithm, you don't know when to stop. How many times should you repeat? Should you do it twice? Should you keep going till the bottle is finished? Should you go on forever? Well, this algorithm is not precise enough. Here's a funny example. The programmer's spouse says, run to the store and pick up a loaf of bread. If they have eggs, get a dozen. And the result of this algorithm is, the programmer comes home with 12 loaves of bread. So the problem here is it's ambiguous, right? Get a dozen what? The algorithm doesn't say. Here's another funny one. A programmer's husband sends her to the store and says, get some bread and while you're there, pick up some eggs. And the result of this algorithm is the programmer never comes back. You can imagine the programmer wandering around in the aisles forever. This is an example of an infinite loop algorithm, one that never stops. Let's think about how algorithms are constructed. The basic building blocks of algorithms are three. The first is sequence, which is just a sequence of statements, one after the other, but in order. So in this case, is the first step, the second step, the third step of the algorithm. A second building block is called selection. This is based on a Boolean condition, meaning a, an expression in here which can be either true or false. If it's true, it causes the algorithm to go down this branch and do this statement. If it's false, it causes the algorithm to go to the left branch and do these statements. And then when it's finished, it continues on to the next statement in the algorithm. The third building block is known as repetition. It's also based on a Boolean condition meaning a condition that could be true or false. If it's true, we do this statement or statements, and we go back and check the condition. And we keep doing that, we keep looping back, um, as long as the condition is true. When the condition becomes false, we're finished with our looping, and we can continue on in our way. Let's look a little more closely at these with some examples from App Inventor. So here's an example of a sequence algorithm in App Inventor. In this case, it's an algorithm to average three numbers. So we start with an initial sum set to zero. We add 70, we add 90, we add 80, and the average then is that sum divided by three. So that's just a sequence of steps, right? 
Here's an example of a selection from App Inventor. We use the if-else block, which you've used many times already in your apps. In this case, we test if the global average is greater than or equal to zero. That's our Boolean condition. That expression is either going to be true or false. If it's true, we'll do this part. We'll, the do part says set the text and the label to nice job. Else, we'll do this part, which sets the text and the label to work harder. And finally, let's take a look at repetition in App Inventor. This is an example of a while block. You haven't used it before, but you will. In this case, we're testing if the global average is less than 70. And while it is, we will add 5 to the global average. Maybe we're curving the grades. So this while test expression is our Boolean test that will come out either true or false. While it is true, we will do the statement or statements inside the do slot, and then we'll loop back and test the condition again. And as long as it's true, we will continue going through this loop. When it becomes false, we will exit the loop and continue on with our algorithm. How are algorithms expressed? Well, they can be expressed in many different languages and notations, including in flowcharts, as we've seen in some of these examples. Certainly, we can use English. And the problem with English and other natural languages is they are not very precise, as we saw in some of those jokes. So we sometimes use an intermediary language called pseudocode, which is somewhere between English and uh, high-level programming languages. So here's an example of something that could be in, uh, English-like, but is more precise than just plain English. We call those pseudocode, and we'll, we'll be giving you examples of these as we go on. And finally, you know, you can express the algorithm in a programming language, in a high-level programming language or a low-level programming language. In this case, we are expressing it in App Inventor, but we could do Python or Fortran or Java or machine language. So to sum up, let's review some of the important facts we've discovered about algorithms. First, an algorithm is like a recipe, but has to be much more precise than most recipes. An algorithm is a step-by-step -step procedure to perform some calculation, each step of which must be precise and doable. And every algorithm can be constructed by using just sequence, selection, and repetition. And finally, algorithms can be expressed in flowcharts, pseudocode, and in many programming languages, including, of course, AppInvent.